No, it's lit. So how do you feel now after that? <laughs> I'm very conscious right now of the animals. Uh -huh. Like, very in tune with the animals. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have stepped, like, quickly. Into? Into two stone. Jessica Roque is a mother of two from the suburbs of Washington, D.C. In college, she used to smoke pot, but gave it up when she became a mom. Now, with legalization happening in states across America, making the consumption of cannabis more socially acceptable, Jessica is interested in picking it up again as a safe recreational drug she can use when her kids go to bed. Cool story, right? But here's why Jessica's story matters way more than you might think. She's the kind of consumer the industry needs more of. The new legitimate business of marijuana is at a crossroads. Legalization in the state of Colorado and the possibility that more states might follow suit has set off what some observers have dubbed a green avalanche. I'm Troy Dayton. I'm a CEO and co-founder of the Arcview Group. We're an investment and market research firm for the cannabis industry. In 2013, we estimated the market at $1.4 billion and we are predicting that it grows 64% to $2.34 billion in 2014, which makes it the fastest growing industry in America. Over a five-year horizon, the total market potential is $10.2 billion. I think you're gonna see a variety of different companies emerge and a lot of different approaches. I've never in yeah. my life seen such an explosion of entrepreneurial energy. Entrepreneurs may be lining up, but who's actually buying legal weed? According to a study by the Colorado Department of Revenue, nearly 70% of the demand for weed comes from heavy marijuana users, people who smoke every day. That's all you need, marijuana and some donuts. Even though people who smoke less than once a month are more numerous than their heavy smoking cohorts, they account for less than 1% of the demand leaving part-time stoners a relatively untapped market. The math, it seems, is simple. For marijuana to truly be the economic juggernaut that many in the industry hope it will, people who don't smoke that much need to start smoking more. People like Jessica. Peter Johnson is an entrepreneur who runs a weed tour company among other marijuana businesses. He agreed to show Jessica what Colorado's weed industry has to offer. Thank you. Well, you bet. Hi. When I bought the pot that I bought in D.C., when I first opened it, it was, it was so pungent that I was terrified driving back to my house. Even after I got it out of my car, yeah. the next day when I picked my kids up, I was like, what if, what if the kids can smell it? Oh, what if the kids, yeah. hi, right. in the back seat. That was just, just from the really, smell, just of, from the the smell right? of the weed. I mean, it was really, <laughs> this is like a whole new level of pungency that I had not remembered from decades ago. Yes. Loading docks yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. the facility is right next door to a municipal building. It is, yeah. <laughs> For our first stop, Peter took us to Colorado's Best, a commercial grow house, so Jessica could see the scale of weed production in Denver. <laughs> At first, there's like that feeling that you are doing something like deeply illegal. <laughs> it was a real surreal break there for me. It's like my adult self, I can't believe I'm taking such a respectable kind of tour of this kind of place. It's all on the up and up, it's totally respectable, it's all legal. And then my 20 year old self is like, I'm surrounded by these huge lush marijuana plants that are incredibly potent and every part of me just wants to like grab, grab them. <laughs> Some pretty neat stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. This is the clone room. Each one of the little cuttings is called a clone. There's a lot of them, aren't there? That's crazy. I'm really curious about the Kong Tang Stomper. Yeah. Sour D? Sour D. Sour Diesel? Sour Diesel? Yeah. There's a Jedi D Star? Death Star. The Death Star? Jedi Death Star. Really? <laughs> but the Death Star is not. It's not. Wow. For the Jedi's. I think it's a Death Star because it's so fucking powerful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just blow your brain, blow your brain That's out. That's right. 
I mean, I would say that if you were kind of wading in, it's hard to imagine, like, you go to the wine store and you get, like, a, you know, Pinot Grigio, right? Sure. It's, a, it's hard to imagine getting, like, comfortably high if you're like, I'm just going to smoke a little bit of the Death Star. The, the trick is to have a little uh -huh. and see how it affects you. Have a little and see how it affects you. It's just about taking a puff or two. It's about moderation, about your dosage. You're so you should gonna, not be intimidated by the name. You're not going to pound a bottle of Pinot Grigio. <laughs> I kind of do pound, well, pound, pound do. a bottle of Pinot <laughs> okay. Grigio. Right. Peter took us upstairs to the mothers, the master plants for each strain. So this is the mother room up here. But we can go up and take a look. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are much, much bigger. If you look closely, like you can see, there's a couple of branches that have been snipped off. All right. And that's where they, they take them and they put them in the clone room. So we can have some more So you keep this pineapple. mother, like, healthy. Absolutely. And you just keep her, just keep her reproducing? That's right. Exactly. She just has to keep reproducing forever? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sad. And you can Huge. see each one is, is named. The OG Stomper. That's right. That is an impressive mother name. I bet that is probably part of your Kong Tang yeah, Stomper. Yeah, the Kong Tang Stomper. That's right. The OG Stomper. And see, but like Green Crack, that's a real branding problem. If you want to try to yeah. get rid of the stigma for yeah. mom, Green Crack is not going to help. Oh, see, the Black Sugar Rose. That's like totally like a Chardonnay name. That's accessible, you Absolutely. know? You'd be like, just come over, it sounds like a have a mom name. party. Rose. You would totally like, just get a little Black Sugar Rose. Yeah. 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 So Jessica, one thing it seemed that gave you pause at least was sort of still the names of these strains, right? Yeah. You obviously already have the kind of like young people who want to like do the kind of scariest sounding name. But when you get older and if you're like kind of wading back into marijuana, like back into pot, there is that branding issue, right? Like you, you need something that's accessible, that's like not going to scare you, like that's not green crack. Another booming market for weed is edibles. Chocolates, candies, and confections loaded with marijuana oil. Our next stop was the biggest manufacturer of marijuana chocolates in Colorado, a company called Incredibles. All right, here we go. Honestly, my last experience with edibles was over a decade ago. We're talking homemade brownies that were, got you two stoned, and then the cycle where you're like two stoned, and then you're hungry, and then you're two stoned, and then you're like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, things have definitely changed since the last time uh, you've tried an edible then. We made the decision early on to, to test all of our oil, and that allowed us to perfect these recipes, make sure that we've got consistent products so you don't over-medicate, because our ultimate goal is for you to have a good time. Yes. Right? If you not, do not I have a good time. Go down the way. I'm not yeah. doing a Marine Dowd. Perfect. One thing that makes me nervous about edibles is I have two kids. So like having chocolate in the house, it freaks me out. All part of the things that we're working on here in Colorado, you yeah. know, it, it doesn't leave a dispensary unless it is in a child-proof container. We've got everything labeled like it's supposed to. All the warnings are on there. But just like anything else, right. you need to keep it out of the reach of children. A lot of the stigma is disappearing, you know, and you're a perfect example that you can come here now and legally consume cannabis. A large portion of, of the market is people just like us. For the most part, it's just the average American who wants to come in and consume cannabis. And that's okay now. Smell anything? Yes. <laughs> now that Jessica had seen cannabis cultivated and even turned into chocolate, it was time to buy some legal weed. Can you check your ID real quick? Yep. Awesome. Maryland. Yes. And all. How much cash should I get out? I'm going to withdraw some cash to buy some weed, which is <laughs> something I have not done in a long time. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty interesting. All right. You know, I don't really know. Oh, the Death Star. Okay, so I'm wondering, does it, in fact, like, explode your mind? 
Uh, no, actually, it's going to be more of like a sedative one. It does okay. have a little bit of a mix. It's Sensi Star okay. uh, crossed with Sour Diesel. It is more of a stony, knock you out type indica. All right. We recommend this for someone who uh, needs the maximum pain. Oh, okay. So this is very yep. strong. All right. Do you see yeah. how they got it arranged here? We've got yeah. indicas over here, hybrids in the middle, and uh -huh. Stevas over here. Yes. So think of it as like a big spectrum. So if I wanted something that was kind of a mellow high, right. not like a deep in my couch, totally stoned, like can't talk, but not like super anxious, high energy kind of thing, what would you recommend? I would recommend? recommend probably the Juicy Fruit. Okay. I mean, this Juicy Fruit is a perfect 50-50 hybrid between uh -huh. Afghan Kush and Thai Haze. Uh -huh. The Thai Haze is super high in THC, so it does give it a little bit of psychoactive, this really nice, uplifting, positive aspect. But the uh, Indica in there is going to mellow it out a little bit. Can you um, smell it? Yeah, definitely. I think I'm going to get some of the Juicy Fruit. Jessica decided on a pre-rolled joint since she was only in town for the day. Here you go. You take this. Okay. And you bring it up to the counter. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're all set. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. So what do you got in the bag there, Jessica? This is my first legally purchased marijuana ever. The pre-rolled joints, definitely a good marketing strategy. Are you a little afraid to maybe smoke the whole thing? It's, it's a little intimidating, yes. Peter had a special place in mind to spark up Jessica's joint. So where are we headed now? We're heading up into the mountains to a piece of private property that I have access to. Uh, we're going to see an outdoor greenhouse grow. More weed. More weed. More weed plants. More. Let's get natural. Let's get natural. So how long have you been here and how long have you been doing this? How long have you had this business? Well, I started growing uh, for myself about four years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, I've decided to um, make it my full-time job. I'm uh, currently a caregiver for five other patients. So I'm growing a variety of strains. And welcome to my girls. So these are a variety of plants. There's 25 in here. Um, by the time they're almost ready to harvest, I'll be bending them over, but they've all been organically grown. I'm going to grow them as tall as they'll get before they start to flower, and they just choose when to do that when the, when the time is right. Now this is a new addition. This is the first time I'm doing an outdoor grow, and they seem to love it out here. These are a lot of uh, sativas here, so that's me. I'm a sativa girl. Yeah? yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to sit on the couch. I want to clean my house. <laughs> it looks like we might be getting some rain. So if you like, we can carry things inside and, and have a little party inside if, if you... Did you see the turkeys? Oh, Those are baby wow. turkeys. This feels a lot different. We're not in like grow central mm -hmm. capitalist. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, trying to churn out customers, sort of right. weed experience. Feels much more personal, right? Less uh, commodified. Warmer feeling. Yeah. <laughs> After moving inside, we settled onto the couch. Peter walked us through some of his preferred methods of getting blazed, including his favorite, vaping. This is really one of the hottest technologies that people are using. It's just, it, it's incredibly convenient. It's much healthier because you're not smoking, um, and it's what a lot of people uh, are moving towards. I can tell you, when I do a lot of tours, uh, people will sample these, and they become converts very, very quickly because it's just so, so easy. Now, does this come in, do the cartridges come in all the different uh, strains? They do. Um, uh, general. Try? <laughs> general indicas and general sativas and general hybrids. So. And which one is this? 
That's a sativa. Is it? Well, I may have to give it a yeah. try. <laughs> All right. I think that seems... Sounds great. Okay. Seems so like a good um, idea. Yeah. Well, you've got your juicy fruit here. I do. Oh, ah. Absolutely. I'll be happy <laughs> like to... I'm popping uh, champagne. You know, uh, <laughs> try squeezing just under that. All right. And then, there we go. Okay. This guy's a pro. <laughs> this is juicy fruit, yeah? <laughs> All right. All right. Keep trying it. I think you keep going. <laughs> No, it's lit. Delicious. It is. <coughs> I'm very conscious right now of the animals. Uh-huh. Like, very in tune with the animals. <laughs> So how do you feel now after that? I may have stepped like quickly into into too stoned mm-hmm. feeling right now. Just like a little, like was very sudden and then my entire body just kind of went. I, I don't know if I can have this conversation okay. right now. Yeah, I hear you. Sorry, That's I just, okay. I can't like talk enough at this moment. Yeah. You want to go sit, sit back down? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. First domino has fallen, and uh, you know there's a whole bunch more that that are ready, and I think we're going to be there when they fall as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, when's the next illicit substance going to be legalized uh, that has never killed anybody? I mean, it's uh, I, I don't I don't know when that's going to happen, if it ever will. All the camels in the world all started from a single ancestor in Nebraska. And then they went across the land bridge and down into Asia. Nice job, guys. They're so, like they do, they look like they're out of labyrinth. I feel like I connect to them because they're like living, fantastic, amazing beings on this earth. It's amazing to connect to any of you, like to look at you and all of you, to connect with all of you. You feel connected to everyone spiritually, (laughs) but like because they're- On like a deeper (laughs) level, on a deeper level because I'm a mom and I know what it is to know deep love, deep. It's a special place. The mountains, there's just some kind of different energy. The air is- Somehow oh, sweeter. It's much, much sweeter, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so much demand for cannabis friendly accommodations. We're looking to expand the supply and we're looking at pieces of property such as this to build some cannabis friendly accommodations. So chill, yeah. people can come out and enjoy it because it's just so cool. They can build you know? a couple yurts. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't about, I don't know about yurts, but <laughs> it's staying a yurt. It's yeah. Great. Uh. Could weed ever become sort of like the glass of wine for you, where it's like you can use it to get to a reliably comfortable state? 
Stay. <laughs> I don't want you to talk to me. Like you're talking to the president of Uruguay. <laughs> but yes, no, it totally could be like be like wine. If if I figured out it's all about like the dosages, right? If for whatever reason I got this high off of like three hits, that is something I could not do. It takes a lot from me in a good way. It's like, but it's an experience. So I would need to figure out the right amount to have and the right kind of like intensity. And mm -hmm. this would definitely be an awesome place to come with friends and hang out for a weekend. It would mm -hmm. be great. Sort of like going to Vegas. Much better than going to much Vegas. Be much better. But just remember, what happens in Colorado stays in your system for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> If federal prohibition is ever repealed and more states make weed legal, pot could become as mainstream as wine, but only if marijuana marketers can figure out how to pitch their product. And it feels like there's still a lot of work to be done. We look at the market from an aggregate standpoint, and we also segment the market. College students, spring breakers, young professionals, newlyweds, women, and mothers in particular, make a lot of buying decisions. Um, and we want them to decide for their next vacation to come to Colorado. Uh, and there's an awful lot of cannabis-friendly moms. This is a country club atmosphere, but they can't do it openly at their country club, so we want to give them a place where they can come and do that. really would not want to be in a country club atmosphere. Like, that's gross. What made this special was that you could not package it. You couldn't control it. You can't just put on a CD of, like, stoner music and, like, spa package or throw out a couple things that are going to be the same for everybody and give them an experience that's just going to work for an entire demographic. It's, like, hugely personal. And it should be. 